Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. This is where we do just about 30 minutes of business before we head back to the Sunrise Daily Studios. I'm Ini Jamekwa, and normally we'll start from the global space. That's what we're doing. We're starting from the global oil space, where prices edged up in Asian trade today, Friday, heading for a weekly gain of more than 3%. As U.S. jobs data calmed demand concerns and fears of widening Middle East conflict persisted. Brand crude features we see for this morning. Morning. It's down uh, up right there, 0.3 percent at $79.18 a barrel. WTI is also up a bit less than that, 0.2 percent, $76.29. And yes, uh, the factors driving it, uh, we see inflation data uh, from China also uh, did uh, prompted a rise in China stocks. And uh, we know the week started majorly in the red uh, globally for most global stocks and even though analysts attributed higher prices to weather disruptions that affected food supplies and caution that there was a little sign of pickup in consumer demand sentiment in the united states also is a factor at this time we saw that it was buoyed after data showed that number of americans filing new applications for unemployment benefits fell uh, more uh, fell uh, more than expected last week suggesting fears that the labor market was unraveling uh, were overblown and easing recession concerns. I think they put the percentage of uh, possibility of recession in the United States now to about 35%. We know what that did in, uh, to the market at the beginning of the week. Also, the eyes on Middle East also where the king of Saudi Arabia, which is the world's largest oil exporter, has agreed that the cabinet could convene in the absence of himself and the prime ministers. I'm sure in the coming days we will see the implication of uh, that uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Now, still in the oil space, uh, going to Dangote now, it seems Dangote still doesn't have a reprieve. And so uh, Dangote has reacted to reports that seems to be going on, saying that crude supply from the N about crude supply from NNPC Limited, uh, making clarifications through a statement that the company denies accusing the regulator, of course, NNPCL, of not supplying crude instead of, instead, the concern is that NUPRC's reluctance to enforce domestic crude supply obligation, that is what they say they are raising concerns about and ensure uh, that there's full crude requirement uh, from NNPCL and the international oil companies. This is not new, unfortunately, but it's still in the news. Well, the statement from Dangote Refinery notes that for September this year, the refinery's requirement is 15 cargoes, of which NNPCL allocated six, despite appealing to NUPRC for the remaining cargoes, efforts have not been fruitful. While the IOCs and international oil companies producing in Nigeria have redirected them to their international trading arms and responded that their cargoes were committed. Consequently, Nigerian crude has now been purchased by Dangote from international traders at an additional 3 to $4 premium per barrel, which translates to about three to four million dollars for a cargo. So there you go again, Dangote crying out for help as, as, uh, as uh, other domestic refiners in the country. And now we're looking forward to Port Harcourt Refinery coming on board. Where will the crude be coming from? This, of course, will make conversations in the coming days. Now we're looking at the currency market and see what happened at the close of trade. It's it was day two of the Dutch auction system in Nigeria. And then we see another gain on the Naira. Has this come to say? Should we put our hearts in it? 0.18% is what was added to the value of the Naira at the close of trade on NAFEM. So it closed at 1,593 Naira 62 Kobo. After it opened at 1,596 Naira 52 Kobo on NAFEX, it was 0.21% gain on that. Uh, but as we always say, this is where... Uh, I should be when we're talking about the official market. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about this more and see if we can expect this auction to uh, continue having this positive impact on the Naira. Of course, everybody will welcome that.
Still staying around currency now, foreign exchange inflows into Nigeria have surged, reaching $25.4 billion between January and June. And that's a 55% increase compared to the same period last year. This is according to data from the Central Bank of Nigeria. This rise is largely due to increased capital importation, which hit $6 billion in June, and record inflows from diaspora remittances. The CBN says its policies are boosting market confidence as the bank continues to address foreign exchange demands, including a $876 million auction. And that was on Tuesday. So we see where the strength of the CBN to intervene in the market and carry out those auctions uh, is coming from. Now to other issues. Now the Standards Organization of Nigeria has threatened to wield the big stake on airing uh, manufacturers and distributors of steel and iron rod who indulge in the illicit, illicit trade of substandard products in the country. The chairman of the Special Task Force at SON, Nigeria, Enebi Olotrinye, says that the agency has been inundated with complaints from distributors expressing concerns over the quality of steel and iron rods in the country. He met with stakeholders in Lagos. News of substandard steel in circulation has reached the Standards Organization of Nigeria. And so the team made up of the special task force of the regulator has come to Lagos to have a word with manufacturers and distributors of steel and iron rods. The chairman of the task force minces no words in expressing his concerns. Rates were carried out to monitor the production and circulation of substandard steel bars. Some people in the process were caught napping or with the wrong material, isn't it? Good. And with all this effort by some, substandard steel products are still everywhere in the market because that is the feedback we are getting. However, the stakeholders are confident that they are not the weak link and redirect the attention of the regulator. A collapse of buildings. No. The soil content is there. People who are building on, uh, on, on clay and, uh, and swampy areas, they don't do rough foundation. They don't do rough foundation. They just go and dig the thing and they don't even put concrete on the, on the basic foundation. I want to build a two-story building and I'm, and I'm digging about three inches to put up a three-story. How will it not collapse? But we want to assure you, sir, whether we set monitor or not, we want to guarantee you that whatever goes out there is standard. And we also want to assure you that we see indirectly they are fighting SON too. Because by constantly putting sort petition out, it's like a way of indicting SON is not doing that job. But we want to assure you that we are with you on this. We will not let you down because we will do what you want us to do. A robust meeting with an opportunity to prefer solution and SON says there's work to be done and it has started already. This meeting is an eye-opener. The, the distributor was there, they say what they know. The manufacturer were around, they said what they know. And now we are trying to bring the bridge that will bring the manufacturer and the distributor on the same uh, bridge so that we can uh, shut a way forward out of this current situation. Somebody is claiming we are in this sector. Well, what we have encouraged the manufacturers to do is to engage in self-regulation. Agreement at the meeting, according to participants, is binding on the manufacturers, distributors, and even the regulator to ensure that no substandard steel will be found in the markets. All right, now let's talk about investment. Uh, of course, uh, quality is also required to ensure that you can win the confidence of investors. But what about driving impact investment, making it purposeful? Let's discuss that now with the Chief Executive Officer of the Impact Investors Foundation, Mr. Temere Glova. She joins us here in the studio. Uh, good morning, Temere, and thank you for your time. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So we talk about money now. I think this, uh, this is about $100 billion, the um, Nigeria Impact Fund, Nigeria what? Wholesale Impact Investment 
fund. Um, but it's sometimes, a one billion dollar fund, just to one billion. It, okay, with the first choice of a hundred million. Okay, the first. Okay, the first tranche is a hundred million. Then it's one billion on a whole. But mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, we hear of these big numbers and wonderful name, one uh, wholesale impact investment. Mm -hmm. How many people really get to know about it? Mm -hmm. um, not even to mention who now gets to access it. And we mm -hmm. have a lot of these funds lying. I don't know if to say they're lying fallow or abused, mm -hmm. you know, different parts and different sectors in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. The Wholesale Impact Investment Fund is a pioneer initiative of the Impact Investors Foundation through its National Advisory Board for Impact Investment. We identified some challenges in the finance sector in Nigeria, which traditional financing cannot solve. So through the National Advisory Board, we decided to in, in innovate this vehicle, which is a funder fund and um, a market builder. The impact investment sector is a dynamic and growing space, which requires a certain kind of capital, which is impact investment to scale meaningful solutions in outcomes such as job creation, um, addressing... So, so, so maybe we should understand what impact investment is mm, okay. first, yeah. you know, because we know the word, <laughs> but what really is it? Because every investment is supposed to make impact That's anyway. True. true. Um, impact investment is a kind of investment that delivers social, let me add, measurable social and environmental impact alongside financial returns. So of the outcomes that impact investment should deliver in a country like Nigeria is one, addressing unemployment and un uh, underemployment, food shortages, insecurity, water, clean water and um, um, uh, hygiene, gender inequality, poverty, and providing basic services that government cannot provide um, quality health care, quality education, and the like. So what investors? Uh, impact investors are investors who have decided to have investment strategies that provide double bottom line, social and environmental impact alongside financial returns, and they cut across investors from the capital spectrum, private equity, venture capital, government, um, private individuals, foundations are some of the providers of impact capital. Mm. So um, in Nigeria, where, how popular is this? Mm -hmm. How effective is mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Or is, are we just catching on? Well, um, impact investing has been growing. The name was first coined in 2007 in Balajo, um, Italy. Um, pro uh, People have been working in the space to build awareness and impact investment in Nigeria. IIF, Impact Investors Foundation, is one of them. So it's gaining ground. It is growing. Since we started in 2019, we've seen individuals, communities building and creating awareness around impact investors. Investors who didn't want to be known as impact investors because, one, um, there's a low awareness of what impact investment is. Impact investment feels like it's charity, it's um, concessionary capital only, it's below market rates. But the definition of impact investment um, are investment that delivers social and environmental impacts and the returns are from below market rate returns to market rate returns, above market rate returns, and all kinds of instruments can be used for impact investment. In Nigeria, yes, we are catching along. The awareness is growing. And Impact Investor has played a key role in creating awareness uh, on impact investments from engage with governments, build partnership when, with When government. you engage with government, which of governments, ministry, federal, states, where, where does the engagement come from? Government at all levels have a part to play in catalyzing the growth of impact investment in Nigeria. We've engaged with ministries, trade and investment. We've engaged, we're currently engaging with the Federal Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning. They are a champion um, arm supporting us in the Wholesale Impact Investment Fund. Uh, yeah. Yes, they've committed 50% of the first close, which is, I think that is commendable for the government to do. The government has a role to play in legislating and also legitimizing impact investment. So when we have the government support, that is at one level, other stakeholders we need to also engage with are your traditional investors, mm. your institutional investors, private sector, pension funds. But you have to give them incentives. Oh, yes. 
you know, to, to get those investors mm. to catch their attention. So this is where policy comes in, right, to ease out regulations and to provide incentivizations to crowd in local capital and direct them towards sectors that are high impact and can deliver outcomes that, you know, will be in partnership with the government to deliver jobs, to deliver basic services, quality health care, um, quality education and the likes. So this wholesale impact investment, uh, you said we're working at least now with 100 million? Yes, the first cost would be 100 million and Kurama Capital is... Uh, and, and you're supposed to do what? Okay, good. And who's supposed to yeah. get into it? Thank you very much for asking that very important question. The wholesale fund is a fund of fund and a market builder. Um, the fund is designed to provide solutions that fina your traditional financial investments cannot solve. One, to provide access to finance to high growth, high impact businesses. Secondly, provide access to finance to local fund managers who know where these businesses are and can design instruments that meet the needs of the market. Secondly, we need a proliferation of local funds to participate in impact investment. The wholesale impact investment is a local vehicle that can crowd in um, investment from local investors. Right. Um, in, in the research we did in 2019, one of the things that international investors, you know, complained about is that we did not have local capital matching with foreign capital come in. So, and there are, there are not enough local vehicles that are attractive for local capital to come in. So the wholesale impact investment fund is positioned to attract local capital to also participate in impact investments. Well, isn't it more um, difficult now in the country when um, macroeconomic indices are not looking friendly. NPR interest rate is high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cost of loans and funding is difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking of petrol. We're talking of energy costs, mm -hmm. transportation costs. So, I mean, even the real sector, I mean, these guys who are supposed to access these funds are reluctant mm -hmm. to even take the step in the first place. These things will always be with us the macroeconomic challenges, but um, they will not always last. But it's important to start preparing now, you know, to ensure that we put all the, we cross all our T's, we dot all our I's, have this fund, get in local investors to invest in, and then start working towards a time that it can provide meaningful solutions to the economy. I mean, um, 2016, 2017, we saw a dip in impact capital. But as the economy bounced back, impact capital bounce back. So it will follow the macroeconomic indices. However, we must do what we have to do and establish this fund and address the challenges that traditional financing cannot solve. Mm, so um, you have numbers as to impact investments at this time in the country mm -hmm. and perhaps what we could do. You know, you, you keep talking about local capital, mm -hmm. you know, matching the foreign one. Perhaps what could be done for that? Um, I mentioned earlier on policy. We need to have policy to incentivize local um, capital. Take, for instance, the pension funds. Um, pension funds, they have this huge amount of funds, you know, sat down in asset under management in pension funds. Only 0.29% of that is going towards private equity, which is quite low. They can do much more, right? If um, the government is going to channel massive resources to address our SDG financing gap, which is valued at $10 billion annually to 2030, the government cannot do it on its own. You need to pri um, partner with the private sector. The whole Senate Party Investment Fund gives an opportunity to the, to the government to partner with the private sector and have policies to incentivize local investors to support innovative financial instruments like the wholesale impact investment fund. Just to add that we do not want to be the only fund in the market, but we are pioneering this fund to inspire other initiators to come up with innovative vehicles to resource our micro, small and medium enterprises because they are the engine room of growth and development in our country. Take for example what they do, employing about 80% of the workforce, contributing 50% to the GDP. That's humongous. And this is our challenge across the continent, Africa, with the $331 billion financing gap for micro, small and medium enterprises to be innovative in our solutions. We can't use yesterday's problem or yesterday's finances to solve today's problem. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. So, so when you talk about um, getting investors interested, is it through the capital market? How, what's the vehicle? Well, um, private 
market fund now, the government, you know, raising the first um, um, the anchor fund, the first tranche, or contributing towards the first tranche, we have several um, stakeholders who have signified interest, and these are development finance institutions, a few private organizations. When we have full-on fund, it would be great to see the capital market also providing support for you know, innovative financial instrument like this. Mm, I'm sure investors would just want to see if really, you know, the finance or the fund is purpose driven and achieved. Mm. I, I trust a lot of Nigerians <laughs> who want to be, you know, who also mm. want to get on that. But we wish you the very best in this drive, trying to popularize uh, impact investments in the country. Obviously, we do need it, especially when you look at the areas, mm. environment, agriculture, yeah. and of course, small businesses being the engine room of the of the company. Thank you so much, Thank Chief you. Executive Office of the Impact Investors Foundation at Temerary Global for your time. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You too. All right, now uh, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll head to the markets. We need to see the impact of that Dutch auction system two days running. We'll talk about that. <laughs> business morning on sunrise daily we head to the markets now it's been two days since the central bank uh, started the implementation or reintroduction i should say of the dutch auction system a uh, trading in the for in the currency market we'll talk about that but let's celebrate with the ngx investors there at least yesterday was a very green day for that market gained 1.05 percent added 577 billion naira to the market cap but i mean we've done better than this in other all the times 55.70 trillion naira is what the market cap closed at at the close of trade yesterday activity chart was in the red in the green i beg your pardon looking so good and we recovered to 98,000 level 98,116.27 and the drivers of this the fugas the mtn also um we've seen them do topsy turvy but yesterday was a green one for them very green day for M mtn investors mtn nigeria investors as well as banking banking we see gained 1.72 percent you rarely see such movement in a single trading session but that's what uh we had right there the fugas of course uh let that's uh, a movement Co uh, consumer goods went up also 0.54 percent industrial goods seem to miss uh, missed out um in the fun of yesterday insurance uh penny stocks growing 1.38 percent of an oil and gas uh, did not miss out of that access call uh still in the market obviously the rights issue and all as well as gt and they got some of those goodies yesterday traded 115 0.98 million in volume that's what access code why gt code did 108.92 but i think our interest this morning is in the financial market if we could have the naira back and we have Dimola Shutuki, he is a, a fixed income dealer with access bank well access of course did well yesterday hi Dimola. good morning um, Good morning. I, Happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, I wish you the same. So, we said the Nara has gained two days now since the Dutch auction system started. I wonder if I should put my heart there and expect that it's always going to be like this. 
Yeah, I think you're right. You know, so what we've seen within the past, uh, well, this week essentially was, you know, some positive sentiments within the market. You know, so the CBN uh, detailed out that they were going to do a Dutch auction, and essentially what it was was to meet a lot of uh, demand, effective demand that had not been met within the market. And by effective demand, what I mean is people who had a genuine need for dollars, but also had an IRA to be able to back it. So how this auction worked uh, was essentially banks were working to collate some of these, uh, some of essentially the demand from customers and ensuring that they had the uh, sufficient funding for that to take place. Uh, we saw the results that were released yesterday and, you know, as uh, the past couple of days have gone, we've seen that positive sentiment, although we've seen a slight appreciation. So yesterday it was a slight appreciation by about two Naira. So it is sending positive indication within the markets because, you know, the CBN, uh, a bit contrary to how it worked in the past, uh, uh, Dutch auction uh, resolved everything at spots, meaning that everyone got their dollars uh, yesterday. And we should see the impact of the debits within the markets, uh, within the biggest that will be released today. Yeah, but uh, I mean, there's some concerns. I, I don't know. I mean, you guys are close up. Perhaps you've heard this. Uh, mm -hmm. How often can we expect the CBN's intervention or the mm -hmm. auctions to take place? Is there a target? I mean, for the bidding, you know, some of those uh, little details seems to also mm -hmm. cause a bit of uncertainty among investors. Mm -hmm. Mm, I think I agree with you, but I think, you know, from this auction, what we've seen is the cutoff was uh, 1,495. So this would suggest that, you know, this is an area that is comfortable uh, for, for, for the CBN um, uh, at the moment. Um, essentially, I think it's a good thing. What we remain, what we expect to see is if this is something that's going to be a bit more frequent. So if they would do this maybe bi-weekly or once a month, and it would definitely help in terms of helping to reduce uh, the pressure in terms of that demand, because, you know, for the month of July, we did see CBN come into uh, intervene within the market uh, at uh, repeatedly with with banks, but essentially that did not help to resolve because we did see that steady trend of depreciation of the you know naira against the dollar. So this is a drive in terms of looking uh, helping to mop up excess uh, excess some of that excess demand that has not been met. You know the total size was about 1.8 billion, of which 876 uh, million were were deemed um, acceptable. Uh, so essentially, we're looking at it that about 74% of that that we're deemed acceptable, that demand has now been taken out of the market, you know, so that would definitely help in terms of easing that pressure. So we should see the Naira begin to appreciate uh, steadily against the dollar. So I'm expecting that, you know, within the next couple of weeks, we should see it stabilize around maybe 1,400 to 1,500, which is much better than the trend we were seeing, you know, in the previous of about 1,600. So I think um, slight uh, progress, and then uh, we expect and uh, we remain to we 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 wait to see what you know the CBI will do if this is going to be more frequent. Yeah, Dimola, I was, I was, I, I'll be praying for 700, at least. I, I don't know if <laughs> that's too much. But, I mean, we see, we see this intervention through the banks now. Mm -hmm. Can we expect mm -hmm. it to go to the BDCs, uh, individuals, mm -hmm. and all of that? Mm -hmm. Any news on that? So nothing at the moment, but I do agree with you in terms of, you know, especially from the retail space, there is a lot of demand that is still uh, waiting to be met, you know, so if we can see this uh, or a similar thing done, you know, particularly for BDCs, that would also help, you know, in terms of meeting some of the the, the, the demand that, you know, maybe not as, 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 as high as for some corporates, but I think it will definitely go a long way in reducing it. I do share the same positivity from you in terms of hopefully we can get back to 700 levels, you know, at some point this year, we are where about... 1,100. I think that was at the back end of April. So I am hopeful and expectant that, you know, before the end of the year, we can hopefully get back to those sorts of levels. But I think, you know, for now, it is a good drive. It does show a lot of pro uh, proactivity from our central bank governor, you know, in terms of looking at the demand and seeing that, okay, you know, maybe these interventions to banks are not necessarily giving the results that they want, you know, let them look at, you know, dealing uh, directly with customers, you know, via, via, via banks, essentially, and helping to, you know, ease some of that demand. So hopefully we can get to 700 yeah, we'll levels. Pray. We'll, we'll stay in prayer together, Dimbola. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Just, yeah, do you have a great day. Yeah. You too. Thanks. All right, so maybe you want to join us in that prayer topic, <laughs> 700 for the Naira. Hopefully we'll get there. But that's it on this side of the program. We head back to the Sunrise Daily Studio. But I'll see you at 1 p.m. We're going to have a full blast. 55 minutes of business. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you then.